Skugak sets 3.9% target tax increase. Dan Kearns, The Standard. Skugak. Skugak residents could see a tax increase of 3.9% in 2019. At a meeting on Monday, December 10th, Skugak Council voted to approve a budget guideline rate of a 2.4% regular increase, plus a 1% special levy for roads and infrastructure, and a 0.5% special levy dedicated for vehicles and equipment. It is essential that additional funding be allocated to roads and infrastructure and the vehicle and equipment reserves to ensure the financial sustainability of the municipality read a report from Treasurer Diane Valentim. The Township of Skugog started setting a target tax increase in the 2017 budget process. In the 2018 process, Council set the same target tax increase, 3.9%, for this year's projected increase. The Township eventually approved a tax increase of 3.86% at the end of that process. The draft 2019 capital and operating budgets are slated to be presented to Council on February 11th. Then a budget open house for both budgets will be held at the Scugog Memorial Public Library on Wednesday, February 20th from 6.30 p.m. until 8 p.m. The final budgets are then expected to be presented to Council for approval on March 4th. MSIFN donates over $366,000 at annual event. Dan Kearns, Scugog. The Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation made the Christmas season brighter for 29 organizations at their annual Christmas check presentation and reception on Thursday, December 13th. At the event, the Mississaugas, through their charitable arm, the MSIFN Donations Committee, made donations totaling $366,750 to organizations. The biggest gifts went to the Port Perry Hospital Foundation and the Oak Ridges Hospice of Durham, which each received $100,000 checks. The Oak Ridges Hospice, as many of you know, still does not exist, except as our vision, our dream. So next year, there will be shovels in the ground, and with this help, it's going to be amazing. Anne Wright from the Oak Ridges... Anne Wright from the Oak Ridges Hospice of Durham said at the event. As well, the Scugog Council for the Arts, SCA, received $20,000. We're very, very happy to receive this. Marion Myers from the SCA said, Windreach Farm Foundation received $5,000. This event is always a very special one for me every year. To hear about all the good work everybody is doing in the community, it's heartwarming. Your generosity and support is also heartwarming. So I'm very, very grateful. Carol Dahlquist, Windreach Farm Foundation Executive Director, told the crowd at the event. Community Care Durham, Prince Albert Public School, Prince Albert United Church, and Scugog Island United Church each received $2,000. Community Living Durham North received $2,500, and Big Brothers Big Sisters North Durham received $2,750. The Scugog Island Community Hall received $3,500. As well, Feed the Need Durham received a $5,000 check. Mayor Letham's meeting with Premier Ford explored shared objectives of growing the economy and best service delivery. Kawartha Lakes On December 10th, Mayor Letham was invited to meet one-on-one with Premier Doug Ford at Queen's Park. The meeting was one of seven held with mayors of municipalities across Ontario, including Mississauga, London, and Guelph. Among the themes discussed were common goals of providing efficient and effective services. The Premier recognized Kawartha Lake's early adoption of a restructured, streamlined council size. He also expressed approval for the municipality's long-term financial planning and ability to tackle sizable infrastructure deficits. They discussed how Kawartha Lakes is taking proactive steps to ensure sustainability of the services and amenities its residents value most, as uncovered in core service reviews. Mayor Lethen remarked on the meeting, We had a great conversation about many things that are pressing for us today. The Premier is supportive of the direction we're moving in Kawartha Lakes. I shared with him some of the specific needs we have as a rural municipality and was pleased with his commitment to assist. Mayor Lethem discussed the need to expedite the planned provincial investment to stimulate local growth and development, namely through the widening of Highways 7 and 35, south of Lindsay, and continued funding of our successful small business entrepreneurship center. 
Mayor Lethem commented, Premier Ford was quick to respond to requests for how the province can help us. We are both working to accelerate growth, development, and job creation. We discussed how we can work together to shorten timelines to make a difference sooner for our community. Premier Ford and Mayor Latham touched on the multiple levels of government investment in major infrastructure, such as the Eastern Ontario Regional Network, EORN, broadband and cellular investments, as well as natural gas expansion into rural Ontario. Other themes discussed included working with the province to construct new long-term care beds in Kawartha Lakes, while repurposing the existing Victoria Manor long-term care facility to deliver health care services. Premier and Mayor Latham also discussed the province assisting municipalities to recruit and retain doctors in rural communities such as the Kawartha Lakes. When it comes to Ontarians' day-to-day lives, municipalities make the most direct impact, said Premier Doug Ford. I had some great conversations with Ontario mayors about how to tackle the issues that people face every day. We're committed to working for the people and respecting the taxpayer. A follow-up meeting was suggested by the Premier to ensure the actions discussed move forward in a mutually acceptable timeline. The Heart of Giving Well, the snow's back, a little. It's a nice dusting of traditional flavour for Christmas time. Unless you're one who likes to ski or snowmobile, then I suppose you may be praying for a little more. Regardless of the weather, the main thing is mobility, especially so family can get together and invest in memories. Being that winter never officially starts till the 21st, Christmas time is a perfect time to invest in winter items for your loved ones. I know my wife needs a new winter coat. Oops, spoiler alert. (laughs) Honey, I was just kidding. I got you something else. Maybe snow tires. Shh. Maybe she won't read the article. Oh, who am I kidding? She's the general manager of the whole place. Gift giving. It's a kind of art, isn't it? I mean, you're serious about the ones you love. Well, I guess that's implied in the word love. So is it style, comfort, or protection from the elements that's the most important aspect here? Or is it some other elusive thing she cares about? Nothing really to do with the item, but rather how she feels about that aspect or you. So what's to consider when buying that special gift? A good guideline comes from a practice I learned from an incredible book I have. It was written by a family and relationship counselor, Gary Chapman, and it's called The Five Love Languages. And it is a book I would recommend to anyone who wants to understand how to solve those relating puzzles. Without revealing too much of the book, let me try to get its basic premise across. Let's say you get a sweater for your dog because you like the way they look, but your dog is a long-haired dog. It's probably not a good fit. Or what if your cat prefers canned tuna food, but you can't stand the smell of it, so you get chicken flavor instead, and the cat refuses to eat it? Do you blame the cat for its preference, or yourself for trying to change the animal? Some breeds will get nauseous eating certain types of food. Now let's take this to getting gifts for people. First, not everyone sees gift giving as a language of love sharing. Maybe they've been used to pay off guilt by others in a person's life, or to distract them from troubling issues. Or they've been used to gain competitive ground by the scorekeeper in your life, tainting the connection with gifts as an expression of love. If this is the case, then the gift you give could be very important. So, an idea for a man to do, maybe instead of purchasing a gift, set something up, like a day out, involving things she likes. It doesn't have to cost much, but she should include small details, showing you've been listening to her life, not just her words, but her life. This kind of thing can reach her because you're spending time or holding her hand to support her as you walk through the snow. Go slow, though. You could tell her you want her to talk, and really surprise her by listening as you walk or sit together, without trying to fix things. Just listen and let her know you could see it her way, too, if you were her. She'll feel less alone. This can give her the strength she needs to deal in life, and that's all the fix she might need. You may even discover she has new hopes and dreams you never knew about her. Your gift to her could wind up being a gift to you as well, as it opens your eyes to her undiscovered life inside. A gift from a woman might be if you spend time to clean up his work area in the garage or in the basement. As long as there are no keep-out signs, this still has to be done with care. If you do a total sweep-out, throw nothing away. I know, but resist the urge. It is his personal space, and many men resent this area being invaded. Remember, this is a gift to his mindset, not an effort to fix or comment on his messiness. Just like the man listening, not fixing a woman when she talks. Maybe have one box for sawdust and rags, 
another for small bits and cut-offs of things, and another with all the tools you truly don't know the place for, or try to put the main ones back where he had them so he can find them easily. Then ask him where the rest go and what you can throw out. The main thing with many men is they can't focus to restart a job half done if the area has been too disturbed unless you have everything at arm's length to recover their momentum. Sharing you are doing this so that he has more room to do whatever he wants in this space is very important. This can help it be received as the wonderful consideration that it is intended to be. After this is done, give him a cup of coffee, maybe with some eggnog in it to make it Christmas, and clear out. What I've touched on here are some other types of gifts you can give those you love that may reach their heart the way they read love. Not everyone appreciates purchase gifts the same way. It is important to show you understand and appreciate the receiver of your gift the way they really are. God knows this, considering Christmas is God offering the gift of joy to the world and peace on earth in each heart, truly something we all need. So let's examine the motive for our gift giving this year and give what someone really needs. It will be a memory not forgotten. Giving, truly, from the heart, involves giving, truly, to the heart. Happy Seasoning! And Merry Christmas. North Durham High School Sports. Marlo Stanfield. Special to the standard. Heading into their upcoming holiday break, local high schools had a busy slate of sports last week. Chasing a fourth consecutive Lhasa championship, the Uxbridge Secondary School Senior Girls Volleyball Team maintained an undefeated record this season at a triple header on Wednesday, December 12th. After earning a tie against the hosts from Dunbarton Pickering, the Tigers rolled to victories against Wilson Whitby and Notre Dame Ajax. Meanwhile, Port Perry's senior girls volleyball team remains in the thick of things in the standings after earning a win over St. Stephen, Bowmanville, and a tie against Ajax. The Uxbridge Tigers senior girls hockey team remains undefeated for the season following a 1-1 tie against Dunbarton and a 3-1 win over Wilson last week. The Tigers' senior boys' hockey team dropped a 4-3 shootout decision to Maxwell Heights, Oshawa, last week. They will look to get back on track on Thursday, December 20th, when they trek to the McKinney Centre in Whitby for a 2.15 p.m. matchup against Wilson. Returning from a hiatus, the new-look Port Perry senior boys' basketball team scored a 58-47 win over Maxwell Heights at home last week, improving the Rebels' record to .500 for the season. The Standard Podcast was produced by Greenstream Studio for The Standard Newspaper. 